my love of books. Wow, that goes back a very long way. I guess you know I was I was read to a lot when I was a child, um, and I think that kind of instilled in me a kind of love of them. I also worked in publishing. It was my first uh, job out of university. I was hopeless. Um, I didn't last very long, but it but it gave me a huge affection for the whole process and the kind of the lovely kind of creative. Um, sort of system that, that happens around books. So I have a real love for the sort of tactile feel of a book too. This is quite a different project for me. It, it's, it's a story about an organisation for a start. I, I tend to write narratives that follow one person through the trajectory often of a, an entire life. This is a kind of very narrow period in history. It's not I mean, it's a very rich and dense period of history, but it, it covers really only about four or five years. And it's lots of different characters, uh, which was a very, again a very different approach for me. But the book turned out to be not at all the book that I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a kind of military history. And although obviously it is a military history to an extent since it's a bit about wartime subject, it turned out to be a kind of series of linked biographies in some ways of characters. It's much more a story, I think, about personality and how individuals, very disparate and diverse, and in some cases very odd individuals, behave under appalling wartime conditions. And in a way it became a sort of study of bravery, um, and the way that bravery can be expressed and, and, and reflected in all sorts of different ways, and not really the classic macho SAS where you might expect it to, to be. I mean, in quite a lot of cases, it's a kind of psychological resi resilience that these people have, rather than some sort of will to war. Yes, I mean, one of the poignant things about this book is that it is really now, the events that it describes are on the furthest tip of living memory. Um, there are very, very few people around who can speak with authority about what it was like. And the, the SAS were extremely helpful in putting me in touch with what they call the originals, the people who, who kind of played a key role in the, in the early days of, of the regiment. And in fact, there is now only one person left alive who was there at the start of the regiment. Um, and he's an extraordinary man too. I tend to read a lot more non-fiction than fiction, which is a great regret, really, because I love reading novels. But I find that I'm 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 sort of in the real world in my in my working life, and so I, I tend to read factual books. Um, I've read one of the books I've really enjoyed this year has been um, John Le Carre's memoir, which is such a wonderful sort of incredible, roistering. You know, he's he's such an amazing personality, I think, and obviously. In, he's played a big part in in my life too. He re, he wrote the introduction to my last book, and um, and and I know him a, a little. And he's it's it, it's a wonderful book. That absolutely absolutely terrific. On the on the on the fiction side, I'm a huge fan of Robert Harris. I will read anything he writes. So um, you know, I've had a sort of field day this year because he's got a new one out. Yeah.